hai bên nhất trí sẽ ưu tiên cao hơn việc giải quyết hậu quả chiến tranh và cam kết tiếp tục hợp tác tích cực trong vấn đề này. Hoa Kỳ sẽ hợp tác với Việt Nam tẩy độc dioxin tại sân bay Biên Hòa sau khi hai nước kết thúc thành công dự án tẩy độc ở sân bay Hà Nẵng. Việt Nam đánh giá cao quyết định của Hoa Kỳ dỡ bỏ hoàn toàn lệnh cấm bán vũ khí sát thương đối với Việt Nam. Việc này cho thấy quan hệ hai nước đã được bình thường hóa hoàn toàn. Ngài Tổng thống Obama và tôi cũng đã trao đổi về phương hướng của quan hệ hai nước thời gian tới và các biện pháp nhằm đưa hợp tác đi vào chiều sâu. Nhấn mạnh tầm quan trọng của việc xây dựng lòng tin và ưu tiên trong hợp tác phát triển bao gồm kinh tế, thương mại, đầu tư, khoa học công nghệ, đào tạo nguồn nhân lực và ứng phó với biến đổi khí hậu. Hai bên khẳng định nỗ lực sớm thông qua hiệp định đối tác xuyên Thái Bình Dương (TPP). Về các vấn đề khu vực và thế giới, ngài Tổng thống Obama và tôi nhất trí hai bên tiếp tục tăng cường phối hợp tại các diễn đàn khu vực và quốc tế. Phía Hoa Kỳ hỗ trợ Việt Nam tổ chức thành công hội nghị cấp cao APEC 2017 tham gia lực lượng gìn giữ hòa bình của Liên Hợp Quốc. Chúng tôi cũng đã trao đổi về những vấn đề liên quan đến tình hình Biển Đông thời gian gần đây, khẳng định tiếp tục hợp tác giải quyết vấn đề biến đổi khí hậu, sử dụng bền vững nguồn nước sông Mê Công. Chúng tôi tin tưởng rằng sự phát triển quan hệ Việt Nam-Hoa Kỳ không chỉ đem lại lợi ích cho mỗi nước, mà còn góp phần tăng cường quan hệ ASEAN Hoa Kỳ đóng góp cho hòa bình, ổn định, hợp tác và phát triển ở châu Á Thái Bình Dương và trên thế giới. Tôi trân trọng cảm ơn thiện trí và những đóng góp quan trọng của cá nhân ngài, tổng thống, các nhà lãnh đạo Hoa Kỳ, bạn bè và nhân dân Hoa Kỳ cho quá trình bình thường hóa và phát triển quan hệ giữa Việt Nam và với những kỷ niệm tốt đẹp về đất nước con người văn hóa và lòng mến khách của nhân dân Việt Nam xin cảm ơn các bạn phóng viên Hoa Kỳ Việt Nam và các bạn phóng viên quốc tế có mặt tại đây hôm nay Good afternoon. Xin chào. Thank you, President Wang, for your generous words. And let me thank you and the government and the people of Vietnam for the sincere welcome and hospitality that has been extended to me and to my delegation. Over the past century, our two nations have known cooperation conflict, painful separation, and a long reconciliation. Now, more than two decades of normalized ties between our governments uh, allows us to reach a new moment. It's clear from this visit that both our peoples are eager for an even closer relationship, a deeper relationship. And I was moved to see so many people lying in the streets uh, as we were driving into town today. I bring greetings and friendship of the American people, including uh, some outstanding members of Congress who are joining me on this visit, and so many Vietnamese Americans whose families bind us together and remind us of the values that we share. I've indicated before that one of my highest foreign policy priorities as president is to ensure that the United States continues to play a larger and long-term role in the Asia Pacific which is vital to our security and to our prosperity. We believe the people of this region should live in security, prosperity, and dignity. In pursuit of this vision, we're more deeply engaged across the Asia Pacific than we have been in decades, and that includes 
our comprehensive partnership with Vietnam. We consider where we have been uh, and where we are now, the transformation in the relations between our two countries is remarkable. Over the past two decades, our trade has surged nearly a hundredfold, supporting jobs and opportunities in both countries. Since I took office, we boosted U.S. exports to Vietnam by more than 150 percent. We're now the single largest market for Vietnam's exports. American companies are one of the top investors here. With our Fulbright programs, thousands of our students and scholars have studied together, and more than 13,000 young people across Vietnam are learning new skills as part of our Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative. Vietnam has become one of the top 10 countries with students in the United States. This year, we've welcomed nearly 19,000, the most ever. And last year, Vietnam welcomed nearly half a million American tourists to this country, and uh, I will assure you that more are on the way. Our two governments are also cooperating more closely than ever. As part of our engagement with ASEAN and the East Asia Summit, we're working together to advance regional security and stability. Vietnam has welcomed American Navy ships to your ports. Our militaries are conducting more exchanges and partnering on maritime security. Together, we're pursuing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, not only to support trade, but to draw our nations closer together and reinforce regional cooperation. We're doing more to meet global challenges, from preventing nuclear terrorism to promoting global health security so that outbreaks of disease don't become epidemics. And with this visit, the United States and Vietnam have agreed to a significant upgrade in our cooperation across the board. We're taking new steps to give our young people the education and skills that they need to succeed. And I'm very pleased that, for the first time, the Peace Corps will come to Vietnam. Our Peace Corps volunteers will focus on teaching English, and the friendship that our people forge will bring us closer to, together for decades to come. American academic and technological leaders, including Intel, Oracle, Arizona State University, and others, will help Vietnamese universities boost training in science, technology, engineering, and math. Harvard Medical School, Johnson & Johnson, GE, and others will join with Vietnam, uh, Vietnam uh, universities uh, to improve medical education. And now that the government of Vietnam has granted the necessary license, we can say that Fulbright University Vietnam, this country's first nonprofit independent university, can move forward open its doors and welcome its first class this fall. We're increasing trade. With Vietnam's announcement on multiple entry visas, it will be easier for Americans to come here and do business and travel. President Quang and I just attended the signing ceremony that many of you saw, where American and Vietnamese companies are moving ahead with a new commercial deals worth more than $16 billion. Boeing will sell 100 aircraft to Vietjet. Pratt & Whitney will sell advanced engines. GE Wind will partner with the Vietnamese government to develop more wind power. Deals like these are a win for both of our countries, helping to fuel Vietnam's economic growth and supporting tens of thousands of American jobs. We agreed to work to ratify and implement the Trans-Pacific Partnership as soon as possible because it will support vital economic reforms here, further integrate Vietnam into the global economy, and reduce tariffs on American exports to Vietnam. And we discussed the high standards that Vietnam has committed to meet under TPP on labor, the environment, and intellectual property. And I conveyed that the United States is prepared to offer technical assistance to Vietnam as it works to fully implement these standards so that TPP delivers the benefits that our peoples expect. With regard to security, the United States will continue to do our part to address the painful legacy of war. On behalf of the American people, including our veterans, I want to thank the government and the people of Vietnam for the many years of cooperation to account for Americans missing in action. Solemn efforts that will continue together. We'll continue to help remove unexploded landmines and bombs. And now that our joint effort to remove dioxin, Agent Orange, from Da Nang Airport is nearly complete, the United States will help in the cleanup at Bien Hoa Air Base. We've agreed to continue deepening our defense cooperation, including patrol boats and training for Vietnam's Coast Guard and to work more closely together in responding to humanitarian disasters. And I can also announce that 
the United States is fully lifting the ban on the sale of military equipment to Vietnam that has been in place for some 50 years. As with all our defense partners, sales will need to still meet strict requirements, including those related to human rights. But this change will ensure that Vietnam has access to the equipment it needs to defend itself and removes a lingering vestige of the Cold War. It also underscores the commitment of the United States to a fully normalized relationship with Vietnam, including strong defense ties with Vietnam and this region for the long term. More broadly, the United States and Vietnam are united in our support for a regional order, including in the South China Sea, where international norms and rules are upheld, where there is freedom of navigation in the North. The United States will continue to fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows, and we will support the right of all countries to do the same. Now, even as we make important progress in the ways that I've just described, there continue to be areas where our two governments disagree, including on democracy and human rights. And I made it clear that the United States does not seek to impose our form of government on Vietnam or any nation. We respect Vietnam's sovereignty and independence. At the same time, we will continue to speak out on behalf of human rights that we believe are universal, including freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly. And that includes the right of citizens through civil society to organize and help improve their communities and their country. We believe, and I believe, that nations are stronger and more prosperous when these universal rights are upheld. And when our two countries continue to discuss these issues as part of our human rights dialogue in a spirit of construction, uh, constructive uh, and cooperative uh, effort. And finally, the United States and Vietnam are expanding our cooperation in ways that benefit the world. Under our growing climate change partnership, we'll support Vietnam as it works to meet its commitments under the Paris Agreement. Because our two countries and others have committed to joining the agreement this year, we're within striking distance of in entering into force before anybody expected. Uh, in the meantime, we'll help communities in vulnerable regions like the Mekong Delta adapt to a changing climate and assist Vietnam's transition to a low carbon economy. And that includes the low carbon energy that will come from our cooperation on civil nuclear power. And as Vietnam prepares to deepen its commitment to UN peacekeeping, the United States is proud to support Vietnam's new peacekeeping training center. So again, President Guang, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for our work together. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to visit with the Vietnamese people. Uh, maybe I will enjoy some cafe suada. Uh, I believe that the relationship between the Vietnamese people and the United States can be one of the most important in this critical part of the world. And I believe that the upgrade in our ties that we've achieved today deliver greater security, prosperity, and dignity for both of our peoples for many decades to come. Xin cảm ơn. Xin trân trọng cảm ơn Chủ tịch nước Trần Đại Quang và Tổng thống Obama. Sau đây xin mời các quý vị phóng viên đặt câu hỏi. Tôi xin mời ông Đức Dũng từ Thông tấn xã Việt Nam. Phóng viên Thông tấn xã Việt Nam có câu hỏi với Chủ tịch nước Trần Đại Quang. Thưa Chủ tịch, xin Chủ tịch cho biết à, đánh giá về những cái bước tiến nổi bật trong à, quan hệ Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ 20 năm qua. sau hơn 20 năm kể từ khi thiết lập quan hệ ngoại giao tháng 7 năm 1995 đến nay quan hệ giữa Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ đã có những cái bước tiến rất là quan trọng trên nhiều lĩnh vực về chính trị ngoại giao Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ đã từ cựu thù trở thành đối tác toàn diện lãnh đạo cấp cao của hai nước đã có những chuyến thăm chính thức lẫn nhau. Hợp tác giữa Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ 
đã phát triển trên cả bình diện song phương và đa phương có nhiều vấn đề liên quan đến khu vực và toàn cầu hai bên cũng đã chia sẻ ngày càng nhiều những lợi ích và quan tâm chung đặc biệt liên quan đến việc duy trì hòa bình ổn định hợp tác và phát triển trong khu vực về kinh tế tôi cũng vui mừng thông báo kim ngạch thương mại giữa hai nước đã tăng hơn 130 lần lên 44,5 tỷ đô la Mỹ vào năm 2015. Hoa Kỳ hiện đang là nhà đầu tư lớn thứ bảy và tôi hy vọng Hoa Kỳ sẽ sớm là nhà đầu tư lớn nhất tại Việt Nam như ngày đại sứ Hoa Kỳ tại Hà Nội đã từng tuyên bố. Quan hệ kinh tế song phương giữa hai nước còn nhiều tiềm năng phát triển và đặc biệt là sau khi hiệp định kinh tế xuyên thái bình dương đi vào thực thi về hợp tác giáo dục đào tạo cũng đã đạt được nhiều tiến bộ rất là quan trọng đại học và cung bài việt nam đã chính thức được cấp phép thành lập số lượng lưu học sinh của việt nam tại hoa kỳ đã tăng 56 lần lên con số là 28.000 mươi lưu học sinh đứng đầu các nước ASEAN. Về quan hệ quốc phòng và an ninh cũng đang trên đà phát triển phù hợp với nhu cầu của cả hai nước. Hợp tác khắc phục hậu quả chiến tranh ngày càng thực chất hơn. Hai nước vừa hoàn tất dự án khởi động giai đoạn 1 ở sân bay Đà Nẵng và sẽ tiếp tục triển khai giai đoạn 2 ở nhiều điểm trong đó có sân bay Biên Hòa. Cùng với những bước tiến quan trọng song phương, Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ cũng đã đang và sẽ tiếp tục tăng cường phối hợp trong các vấn đề khu vực và quốc tế mà hai bên cùng quan tâm tại các diễn đàn quốc tế. Những cái bước tiến triển nêu trên trong quan hệ Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ đạt được bắt nguồn từ thực tế hai bên ngày càng chia sẻ nhiều quan tâm lợi ích chung và nghiêm túc thực hiện cam kết tôn trọng độc lập chủ quyền thể chế chính trị và lợi ích chính đáng của nhau chuyến thăm lần này của tổng thống obama sẽ tạo thêm động lực mới cho sự phát triển quan hệ giữa việt nam và hoa kỳ thời gian tới đóng góp tích cực vào việc duy trì hòa bình ổn định hợp tác và phát triển ở châu á thái bình dương và trên thế giới First question on the American side will come from Matt with Helen with Reuters. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for both presidents about the lifting of the arms embargo. Um, to what extent do you see the need to build up the um, military deterrent against China's behavior in the South China Sea as part of this decision? Um, could this include um, expanded U.S. access to Vietnamese ports, including Cameron Bay? Uh, directly for President Obama, uh, to what degree will the U.S. decide on weapons sales based on human rights considerations? And for President Obama, uh, how do you respond to the U.S. push for improved uh, human rights situation in Vietnam? Well, Matt, uh, the decision to lift the ban was not based on China or any other considerations. It was based on our desire to complete what has been a lengthy process of moving towards normalization with Vietnam. The process that began with some very courageous and difficult uh, conversations decades ago, uh, including led by our current Secretary of State, John Kerry, Senator Tom Harper, John McCain, and a whole bunch of other uh, Vietnam veterans, uh, as well as uh, their counterparts in the Vietnamese government. And over time, what we've seen is uh, a progressive deepening and broadening of the relationship. And what became apparent 
to me and my administration at this point was is that uh, given all the work we do to get across the spectrum of economic, trade, security, humanitarian efforts, that it was appropriate for us not to have a blanket across the board bank. Now, every sale that we make to everybody uh, is viewed as a particular transaction. We examine what's appropriate and what's not. And there's some very close allies of ours where we may not make a particular sale until we have a better sense of how you know, that piece of equipment may have been being used. So we're going to continue to engage in the case-by-case -case evaluations of these sales. But what we do not have is uh, a band that's based on an ideological division between our two countries because we think that at this stage, uh, both sides have established a level of trust and cooperation, including between our militaries, uh, that is reflective of uh, common interests and mutual respect. In fact, one of the things that's happened through this conference of partnership is a dialogue between the U.S. and Vietnamese military that we haven't seen uh, in a very long time. Uh, and you know, we already have U.S. vessels that have come through the port. We expect that there will be deepening cooperation between our militaries. Times around how do we respond to humanitarian disasters in this region. Uh, there may be uh, you know, occasions in which that means that additional U.S. vessels uh, might visit, but I want to emphasize that we will do so only with the invitation and with the cooperation of the Vietnamese government, fully respecting their sovereignty and their sensitivities. Uh, now, there is, I think, a genuine mutual concern uh, with respect to maritime issues between the United States and Vietnam. And I have no secret of that. Vietnam, uh, along with ASEAN, uh, met at my invitation in Sunny Lands, California, and we put forward a very clear statement uh, that it is important for us to maintain the freedom of navigation governance of international norms and rules and law that have helped to create prosperity and promoted commerce and peace and security in this region. And it's my belief that uh, with respect to the South China Sea, although the United States doesn't support any particular claim, we are supportive of the notion that these issues should be resolved peacefully, diplomatically, in accordance with international rules and norms and not based on uh, who's the bigger party and can throw their weight around a little bit more. At the same time, as I indicated in my initial statement, the United States is going to continue to fly and uh, set forces uh, for our ships uh, as international law allows. Uh, our hope is that ultimately various claimants and various disputes can be resolved and we'll do everything that we can to promote that. In the meantime, part of our cooperation with Vietnam is to uh, improve their maritime security posture for a whole host of reasons. Uh, but I, I want to emphasize that my decision to let the ban really was more reflective of uh, the changing nature of the relationship. The last point with respect specifically to human rights, uh, as I indicated in my opening statement, this is an area where we still have differences. There's been modest progress on some of the areas that We've identified as a concern. TPP actually uh, is one of the things that's prompting a series of labor reforms here in Vietnam that could end up being extraordinarily significant. Uh, but that is not directly tied to the decision around uh, military sales. Tôi xin uh, trả lời về vấn đề có liên quan đến uh, nhân quyền trong cái quan hệ hai nước. Uh, thưa các bạn, cái quan điểm nhất quán của nhà nước Việt Nam uh, luôn luôn bảo vệ, tôn trọng uh, quyền con người. 
điều này đã được ghi rất rõ trong hiến pháp của nước cộng hòa xã việt nam năm 2013 chúng tôi cũng đang tiếp tục thể chế hóa bằng các dự án luật có liên quan đến vấn đề tôn trọng bảo vệ quyền của con người thực tế hơn 30 năm thực hiện công cuộc đổi mới của đất nước chúng tôi chúng tôi cũng đã đạt được nhiều thành tựu trên các lĩnh vực kinh tế xã hội quốc phòng an ninh trong đó có vấn đề liên quan đến bảo vệ quyền con người quyền công dân những cái thành tích đó cũng đã được cộng đồng quốc tế dư luận quốc tế ghi nhận và đánh giá cao một trong những cái ví dụ minh chứng điển hình đó là việt nam đã được bầu vào ủy ban nhân quyền của liên hợp quốc nhiệm kỳ 2014 2016 cũng như này tổng thống Barack Obama cũng vừa phát biểu giữa hai nước Việt Nam và Hoa Kỳ cũng còn có những sự khác biệt trên một số vấn đề điều đó cũng dễ hiểu trong đó có vấn đề nhân quyền chúng tôi nghĩ rằng trên cơ sở tôn trọng và với tinh thần hiểu biết lẫn nhau hai nước cần tiếp tục mở rộng đối thoại trên cơ sở đó sẽ để làm giảm thiểu những cái khác biệt trên các lĩnh vực nói chung và trong đó có vấn đề nhân quyền xin cảm ơn xin mời các phóng viên việt nam tiếp tục đặt câu hỏi tôi xin mời ông quang anh từ đại truyền hình quốc gia I have one question for President Obama. Um, you have visited over 50 countries during your term as a U.S. President, and Vietnam is among the last few on the list. So, what does that say about the Vietnam-U.S. relation, and um, how important does the U.S. view on uh, Vietnam and its uh, foreign policy? Thank you. Well. I would have liked to have gotten here sooner. Uh, and maybe one of the ways of thinking about it is uh, we have an expression in the United States, we save the best for last. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a remarkable country, it's a beautiful country, and uh, I told the president that unfortunately when I uh, visit, I'm usually in meetings all day long. is extremely important, not just to the region, but I think to the world. First of all, I think highlighting the changes that have taken place between our two countries, how just a generation ago we were adversaries and now we are friends, should give us hope, should be a reminder of the ability for us to transform relationships uh, when we have a dialogue that's based on mutual interests and mutual respect uh, and uh, people to people exchanges. Second, Vietnam is a large, vital, growing country in a large, vital, and growing region of the world. I've said this before the Asia Pacific region is as, uh, growing as fast as any place uh, around the world. young and dynamic region. Uh, it is full of entrepreneurial spirit and uh, you're seeing new companies and new jobs being created constantly. So the United States wants to be a part of that. Uh, and we historically have had good relations with many countries in this region. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, as Vietnam grows and becomes more prosperous, uh, achieve greater opportunity that the young people of Vietnam have a chance to partner with the young people of the United States. Uh, trading, exchanging ideas, uh, working on scientific projects, starting businesses together. Uh, because I think that will be good for both countries. Uh, and we think that it is important from our perspective that as a leader 
as a leader in ASEAN, uh, that uh, we engage Vietnam bilaterally because we want to continue to strengthen our cooperation with uh, the multilateral organizations like the East Asia Summit and ASEAN, where we think we've seen some very real progress over the last several years uh, on everything from commercial issues to disease control to humanitarian issues. One of the things that we increasingly discover is it's harder and harder to solve problems by ourselves. It's much easier for us to be able to tackle big problems like climate change or uh, the outbreak of disease uh, or responding to humanitarian disasters when we have an architecture of cooperation already established. So, on all these fronts, uh, we've seen remarkable progress. Uh, the announcements that we're making today, I think, uh, should give people an indication of the next stage of the U.S. Vietnamese relationship. Uh, these are big deals, all the things that we mentioned here today. Uh, and it indicates a broader and deeper relationship uh, that I'm confident will continue to grow in the future. Final question comes from Angela Riley King Thank you. President Obama, is there a specific partnership that seems fairly stalled in Congress? And other countries are looking to follow the U.S. lead in terms of how they advance their approval of the agreement. With the deals today announced for Boeing and GE and your visit here to Vietnam, are you looking to change your strategy and how you seek approval for the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Congress? And do you think that the agreement should be amended? So first of all, on TPP, Angela, uh, I haven't been around as long as Senators Carper, Secretary Kerry, but I've spent enough time in the Senate to know that every trade deal is painful. Um, because folks are always seeing if they can get an even better deal. And especially when you have uh, a multiple uh, parties involved. Folks are going to be scrutinizing it, they're going to be debating it, and in the election year, uh, you can anticipate that some folks are going to uh, try to uh, score political points on it. Having said that, I remain confident we're going to get it done, and the reason I'm confident is because it's the right thing to do. It's good for the country, it's good for America, it's good for the region, uh, it's good for the world. And I know I've, I've sold this to you before, but let me reiterate, this is the fastest growing part of the world. This represents an enormous market for the United States. Most countries here already sell their stuff to the United States, and we have relatively low tariffs. In other words, we put relatively low taxes on goods that are coming in to the United States. In contrast, tariffs are significantly higher for U.S. goods being sold here. So a deal that gets rid of 18,000 taxes on U.S. goods into the largest, fastest growing markets in the world, that's a good deal for American businesses and American workers. Number two, one of the biggest complaints about trade deals historically has been that it opens up our markets to countries with uh, lower wages, harsher labor practices, less environmental regulation. Well, if you're signing up for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, you are making commitments that are enforceable to raise labor standards, to ensure that workers have a voice. 
to attend to environmental problems. And so this gives us the ability to engage with a country like Vietnam and work with them on all those fronts. The precise things that people in the past have been concerned about when it comes to trading with other countries. So uh, I have not yet seen a credible argument that once we get TPP in place, we're going to be worse off. We are demonstrably better off. American workers and American businesses are better off if we get this deal passed. And I'm confident we will get it passed. Now, the politics of it uh, will be noisy. Uh, that was true when I, for example, inherited the Korean free trade agreement or the Colombian, the Pan uh, Panamanian. Free trade agreements when I came into office, but we got them done, and I'm confident that we'll get them done uh, this time as well. Although it'll, it'll be ups and downs and bumps uh, along the way. With respect to currency manipulation, we have provisions in TPP that uh, advance the transparency and reporting functions uh, that allow us to monitor whether we think that currency manipulation is taking place. One of the debates that took place, and there have been some, some who argue that we should have enforceable provisions that uh, if you see a currency going down too far, that we should be able to impose tariffs on that country. The problem is, is that it's very hard to sort out sometimes why a currency is going down and whether it's actually being uh, manipulated. And frankly, for us to bind other countries to commitments about their monetary policy would mean we were also binding our Federal Reserve to uh, the claims of other countries in terms of how it implements our monetary policy, and that's not something that uh, we would do. We would not give up sovereignty with respect to our monetary policy in that way. But we have strengthened uh, a number of the provisions that are already uh, contained in TPP uh, that will allow us to put on notice of folks who we think are engaging in competitive devaluations. Finally, on uh, the Taliban leader, uh, Mr. Mansour, uh, it has been confirmed that he is dead, uh, and he is an individual who, as head of the Taliban, was specifically targeting U.S. personnel and troops inside of Afghanistan who are there uh, as part of the mission that I've set to be able to maintain a counterterrorism platform and uh, provide uh, assistance and training to the Afghan military forces there. So this does not represent a shift in our approach. We are not uh, re-entering uh, the day-to-day -day combat operations that are currently being conducted by Afghan security forces, our job is to help Afghanistan secure its own country, not to have our men and women in uniform uh, engage in that fight for them. On the other hand, where we have a high-profile leader who has been consistently part of operations and plans to potentially harm U.S. personnel, and who has been resistant to uh, the kinds of peace talks and reconciliation that ultimately could bring an end to decades of war in Afghanistan, uh, then it is my responsibility as Commander in Chief not to stand by, uh, but to make sure that we send a clear signal to the Taliban and others uh, that we're going to protect our people. Uh, and that's exactly the message that has been sent. <coughs> Xin, xin trả lời thêm về vấn đề có liên quan đến hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương TPP. TPP theo chúng tôi là một liên kết kinh tế thương mại có ý nghĩa quan trọng, có góp phần duy trì cái sự tăng động và cái vai trò đầu tàu trong tăng trưởng kinh tế của đất nước chúng tôi nói riêng và của khu vực châu Á thái bình dương nói chung. Đối với Việt Nam thì TPP 
và việc ký kết TPP của Việt Nam cũng là một bước triển khai cái chủ trương hội nhập quốc tế sâu rộng toàn diện để góp phần phát triển kinh tế xã hội của đất nước. I'm sure that he was saying something very wise and important. <laughs> yeah. uh, tôi xin uh, nói thêm, uh, Việt Nam cũng đã cùng các cái nước thành viên nỗ lực thu hẹp khác biệt trên cái tinh thần xây dựng và hiểu biết và quan tâm thỏa đáng đến uh, lợi ích của nhau đã đi đến ký kết uh, hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương. Thế việc đã đạt được kết quả tuần này cũng là kết quả và cái sự nỗ lực của 12 quốc gia thành viên không riêng thì quốc gia nào và chúng tôi cũng đang tích cực để chuẩn bị phê chuẩn cái hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương và cũng cam kết sẽ thực hiện những cái cam kết đã đạt được trong cái hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương xin lỗi em lại câu trả lời của mình vấn đề có liên quan đến hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương theo chúng tôi hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương là một cái liên kết kinh tế thương mại có nghĩa rất là quan trọng góp phần duy trì cái sự năng động có vai trò đầu tàu trong thúc đẩy tăng trưởng kinh tế ở khu vực châu á thái bình dương đối với việt nam TPP là một bước triển khai chủ trương hội nhập quốc tế sâu rộng và toàn diện, góp phần thúc đẩy phát triển kinh tế xã hội của đất nước chúng tôi. Việt Nam đã cùng các quốc gia thành viên nỗ lực thu hẹp cái sự khác biệt trên tinh thần xây dựng, hiểu biết và quan tâm thỏa đáng đến lợi ích của nhau. Việc đạt được cái thỏa thuận TPP cũng là kết quả nỗ lực của tất cả 12 nước thành viên. TPP không riêng của quốc gia nào. Việt Nam chúng tôi cũng đang tích cực chuẩn bị phê chuẩn cái hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương và chúng tôi cũng cam kết sẽ thực hiện những cái cam kết đã đạt được trong hiệp định xuyên thái bình dương. Xin trân trọng cảm ơn chủ tịch nước Trần Đại Quang và tổng thống Obama. Thưa quý vị, cuộc họp báo của chúng ta kết thúc tại đây.